All right, another one of the classics. <laughs> we're doing the big, we're doing the big hits on this channel. Uh, cardiac muscle. Sorry, I've just come from a three hour lab revision session. So my uh, brain is mush. Um, we're going to talk about sarcomeres again. We're going to talk about how the cardiac muscle is similar to skeletal muscle that we looked at last time, but how it's different. We're going to talk about uh, intercalated discs. I mean, that is like the big feature of the cardiac myocytes. And we'll talk about how um, the action potentials are conveyed along the muscle fibers around the atrium, around the ventricle. And uh, all of that good stuff, right? So the cells of the muscle of the heart. Okay, what have we got? Um, it looks like a, a chunk of ventricle, or um, slices of a chunk of ventricle, rather. Um, so cardiac muscle is striated muscle, and we were looking at skeletal muscle last week, which is also a striated muscle. It means it looks stripy. Okay, oh, there's some good bits. Um... The difference, well, there are a number of differences, as we'll see, but skeletal muscle is a muscle you use to, you, you choose to make movements and you make those movements. Skeletal muscle typically moves bones, but it can also move things like the tongue. Um, so, in terms of similarities, we can see that the, uh, the cardiac muscle here the striated muscle of the heart is also organized like the skeletal muscle is. So we have myocytes wrapped up by connective tissue into fascicles. Um, so we have connective tissue around the cells, which is the endomecium, and then cells, uh, then connective tissue around the bundles of the cells, which is the paramecium, and so on. Uh, and we can see we've got some fibers down here which are being cut in a more um, transverse section. And we've got some other fibres which are running more longitudinally. Without further ado, we should jump up to the 10 times objective power. A um, bit more light, maybe. And see what we see. Let's have a look. This looks pretty good. So here we've got cardiac muscle cells running from left to right across the screen. Uh, cardiac muscle cells are called, are called uh, cardiomyocytes. And we can see lots of nuclei, we can see lots of red, and we can see lots of red fibres running along. So the red fibres um, are the contractile elements within the muscle that, we, that have been stained. This looks rather similar to skeletal muscle. Let's jump up to a higher power. Uh, so here's the... Uh, is the 20 times objective, and I've got uh, 10 times uh, magnification eyepieces. So this is 200 times magnification to my eyes. It'll be something similar for you, but it depends on the size of your screen as to how big this is. Now, I'm going to tell you what I can see and what I expect to see. Um, cardiomyocytes are not single, very, very long cells like the myocytes in skeletal muscle are. And they are not multinucleated with nuclei around the outside. Cardiomyocytes are single cells with usually a single nucleus within them. So they're, they're much shorter. They're not these super long multinucleated cells that are centimetres and centimetres long. They are short cells. Now I can see uh, we have parallel pathways um, running across there. And I can see some of those parallel pathways are linked by bridges. And that's a known feature of cardiomyocytes. Um, I can't see much in the way of striation here. Can you? Now, um, in between the lanes of red, we can see more nuclei. We can see some gaps where there's not a lot of stain. Uh, that's the endomecium. So the cells in there will be fibroblasts, the cells of the connective tissue that's making the connective tissue supporting um, the muscle cells. Let's jump up to the uh, 40 times objective lens. Oh, that, why does that look so soft? Yeah, I think we might have had a bit of a false start with this one. 
Let's, um, well, not actually, this is a more modern slider, slightly better stain. It's, it's classic uh, anatomy, so I've got, I think I've got quite a few sections of this from different collections. Um, ah, okay. Um, sorry, that's a bit bright, isn't it? Um, so we're seeing connective tissue in green, we're seeing some purpley muscle here, and again we're seeing some muscles in uh, cross-section. We can see lots of black nuclei, which is great, so the nuclei are a bit easier to see. Um, and here we've got um, cardiomyocytes running across from left to right. Let's zoom back up again. Ah, I can see some striations straight away now. Yeah, this is better. Can you see them? Am I just uh, tricking myself? Let's jump up to that 40 times objective. Um, so by striation, so we've got the, the cardiomyocyte running from left to right, or the, 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 the road of cardiomyocytes. And then running across them, we can see uh, dark and light bands. They are they are tricky to see. They are a little bit faint, but I can see some in the middle there. Um, up to the left, uh, middle and left, we've got some connected tissue. We've got a blood vessel in there, but uh, right in the middle, we've got some some subtle banding there. So the 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 filaments, the microfilaments that are inside the contractile muscle cell, we have thick filaments and thin filaments. We have uh, actin and myosin, and they overlap, and they walk along one another. That process uses energy in both directions, and that can generate force and change the length of the muscle cell. Uh, so by generating force and changing the length of the muscle cell, you can cause movement, and in this case, we can cause the walls of the heart to contract and squeeze blood out, right? The dark bands are called A bands, the light bands are called I bands. You can remember this because dark has got an A in it, light has got an I in it. Uh, the dark bands are largely, so the um, actin are the um, thin filaments, myosin are the thick filaments. So where you have the thick filaments, you have the darker band, and the thick filaments also overlap with the thin filaments a little bit. Where you only have thin filaments, you have the light band, and that's what gives that, that pattern there. Now within the light band, there will be a Z disc. I can't see it, but that Z disc is what the actin filaments are attached to. So as the actin pulls along the myosin, the, the Z discs or Z lines get pulled closer together, uh, the Z line, either end of the Z line, that marks the sarcomere, the functional contractile unit of the cardiac muscle cell. So the Z lines get closer together because of those sliding filaments and the muscle gets shorter and generates force. Um, okay, so can you see how instead of having, um, I mean, the other, the other feature we really want to look for are intercalated discs. Um, I can see that dark mark in the middle there. The intercalated disc marks where one cardiomyocyte ends and the next cardiomyocyte begins. It's a, it's a join between two neighbouring cardiomyocytes. So like I say, we don't have very, very long cells like we do with skeletal muscle we have shorter cells joined together by these intercalated discs. And we're not seeing long cells with nuclei around the outside. We can quite clearly see how the nuclei are inside the cell there and interrupting the contractile machinery. And again, we can quite clearly see how those, those lanes of cardiomyocytes are linked by bridges. So sometimes you have one cardiomyocyte and it actually gives off two bridges to meet to two new cardiomyocytes. And we'll talk about why that is. Um, but I think I can see some very nice striations as we move around this section. And we're moving now into the, trans uh, the transverse section stuff. So let's go back up again. So it's called striated muscle because we see these stripes. 
It's similar to the striated muscle of the skeletal muscle because we have the same contractile elements and structures of the sarcomere as we do in skeletal muscle, but it's different because these cells are short. So the intercalated disc, uh, I guess it has two jobs to do. One, it has to tie the cardiomyocytes together very, very tightly. So when they contract, they pull their neighboring cardiomyocytes along. So all the cells get pulled together. They don't pull themselves apart they get pulled together to cause the contraction of the atrium or the ventricle. So for that, there are desmosomes. The desmosome is a junction which um, ties these two cells together very, very tightly. And here there are also adherence junctions or fascia adherens. And I don't know if you can get a sense of how, you know, we've got those microfilaments, which are only, you know, 10 nanometers or less in diameter. But those, those filaments running across the image, the actin and the myosin. So the actin are tied to the intercalated disc by the fascia adherens or the adherens junctions. And then here we've also got gap junctions. And gap junctions are a method of connecting two cells and connecting them in such a way that they can share molecules. In this case, they can share ions. I imagine that these cells have got a fairly unique job. Not only have they got to tie themselves to, together so that when they contract, they all contract together, but when the, when the heart contracts, so when the action potentials are produced and cause contraction of the muscle cells of the heart, it's, the set, it's these cells. These cells are contracting, but they're also passing on the action potentials. They're passing on the de depolarization to the next cell to the next cell, to the next cell. And in that way, the heart muscle contracts in a coordinated manner to squeeze the blood from the atria to the ventricles and from the ventricles to the main arteries. Um, so the gap junctions are the method by which ions are transferred to the next cell and the action potential is transferred to the next cell. Um, so that's what's happening at the intercalated disc and that's why that's so important. So that is why we also see bridges so rather than having completely, oh, there's some nice intercalated discs there, rather than having completely separate lanes of cardiomyocytes, they're linked so that the action potentials will pass to the next lane so that everything is joined up, um, so that everything contracts as it should in an organized fashion. Because if it doesn't, it's not going to work. The heart's not going to pump blood. That's a really that's a really good bit in the middle there, actually. I can see the striations and the intercalated discs. Maybe I've just got my eye in. Um, if the heart is overloaded, um, these cells will hypertrophy. So like with skeletal muscle, um, you don't tend to get more muscle cells when the muscle gets bigger. The, the muscle cells themselves get bigger, so they will have more mitochondria, more sarcomeres, and these cells themselves will get bigger. Um, let's go down to just have a quick look at the transverse sections through the cardiac muscle. I mean it is a little bit less interesting um, but can you see how we can see nuclei within some of these cardiac muscle cells within these cardio muscle, card, cardiomyocytes. And the spaces around the cardiomyocytes there, uh, we can see a little bit of green, we can see some tiny capillaries there. Uh, that's the endomecium, the connective tissue that is uh, supporting these muscle cells and helping them tie them all together so the muscle functions as a unit. You need the connective tissue for everything to work. Oh look, there are some really nice cardiomyocytes in the middle there, and you can see the nuclei within the cell rather than on the outside edge of the cell. Um, yeah, uh, and blood vessels, and uh, hey, yes, that's about it for cardiomyocytes. Um, but that's, that's the heart muscle. So of course heart muscle has got a fairly unique problem in that it um, needs to uh, start contracting in an organized and rhythmic fashion and never stop doing that. So it has interesting um, energy demands and oxygen demands and getting rid of metabolic waste demands. 
Um, but the key features are it's a striated muscle fibre, we have short individual cells with nuclei inside, we have intercalated discs tying them together and sending the action potential onto the next cell to trigger that cell to contract, um, and we have uh, bridges linking these lanes together. Very, very nice to look at. Pretty cool. <laughs> As usual, I'm enjoying myself. Uh, if you found that useful and interesting, and if you're enjoying yourself as well, well, that's a, that's a bonus, I think. Um, but there we go, cardiac, cardiac muscle. See you next week.